Today, we look into the Stages left right dual crank set here. Based on the Shimano R9100 crank set, we go through the details, the installation, and have a look at my ride data from the past few months. The Stages left right unit, as shown here, can be used as a left only, a right only, or for what it's really built for, a dual sided power meter, which both sides are linked and presented as one over Bluetooth or Ant Plus. Jumping straight into the technical specifications of the unit, well, it is based on the Shimano crankset as mentioned. The power module's adding only 35 grams to the crankset itself. It comes in standard, mid-compact or compact with sizes from 165 through to 175 mil. Power meter accuracy is claimed plus or minus 1.5%. The power range, zero watts up to 5,000 watts. Cadence range, 20 to 220 RPMs. The stages left right is powered by two coin cell batteries, the CR2032, which we should all be very familiar with now and have a few spare in the drawer. Also, 175 hours of life between battery swaps, which is pretty significant. Stages power meters all come with active temperature compensation, so if you're moving from hot to cold or cold to hot during one ride, the numbers should still be pretty consistent. It comes with accelerometer-based cadence measurement, wirelessly upgradable firmware, and an LED indicator, so you can see battery status and uh, calibration status on the unit itself. The notable updates from the previous generation stages units, the Gen 1 and Gen 2 units, are the upgraded accelerometer and the addition of a gyroscope for cadence measurement, and the upgraded BLE and Ant Plus radios for six times the power or the distance. Now, I have tested this with the left side 105 Gen 3 stages. I literally put the head unit meters away on the bike and had no dropouts. So, dropouts and signal strength are not an issue with this unit. With the price tag of this particular unit, the Durace model, coming in at $12.99 US dollars. As is standard practice, we'll put everything on the scales first. So the right hand side crank and rings come in at 481 grams. Putting the left crank on there brings the whole system to 669 grams. So a pretty light crank set for a dual left right power meter. Installation is very straightforward, especially on the TCR here since I'm taking off a similar Shimano crank and installing the Durace one in its place. So same bottom bracket, same spacing, everything is good to go. The configuration via the Stages app is very straightforward. You just connect via Bluetooth via your phone or Ant Plus if your phone supports that. You can then configure left only, right only, or link them both to have left and right. And you can also do firmware updates and zero offsets from within the app. One thing I will mention with the latest firmware update to 1.5.0, the right side took three attempts to update. So it took around 10 minutes. So you had to be, uh, you had to do it a few times to get that working, but I got there in the end, just something to note. It can be a little flaky with those Bluetooth connections and those firmware updates. Okay, with the details, the tech specs, the installation, and the firmware slash configuration all out of the way, let's jump over and have a look at a few months of data I've collected with this unit. You guessed it, here we are, my favorite website on the internet, DC Rainmakers Analysis Tool, where we can compare multiple power meters together with an overlay and see how they all stack up. Now, first of all, a warning, there's a rabbit hole with this one again. There are four Llama Lab tests. I hope to skip through nice and fast, and I've got an outside ride as well with some footage from outside, so we're not just stuck down the bottom here in this graph picture. So, first up, this was from back in uh, August last year. So a few months ago, I've had this unit for quite a while, and I've been giving it every single opportunity to give us some good data. Bear with me, let's go through it. Standard Llama Lab test, which we are all familiar with. And we can see here, as we dive in, mm, apologies if you're viewing this on a mobile phone, you won't be able to see it too well, but if you're on PC or a bigger screen, yeah, you can see what's going on here. Something's reading a little low. So the first test here was the Asioma Duos, the Stages Left Right, and the Kicker 18. The Stages was doing its own thing though. It was dropping down about 10 to 15 watts through the steady state sections, which we can see. If we drop down into the left right power meter uh, analysis here because we have the asiomas which have two channels we have the stages left right two channels and the kicker which only has one but throw that aside for now we can compare the left right balance and if that's an issue with me and in the data so yeah, it's not looking too good on the right hand side so diving in here we can see uh, there's a drop on the stages right hand side of the power meter so we have uh, 122 and 123 on the asiomas 50-50, or as close to 50-50 as you're gonna get. The stages, left reads 127, the right reads 106. So we have the right-hand side of the stages power meter reading low, 
throughout the steady state. I'm gonna skip over the sprints on this because I didn't put enough into it, didn't even crack a thousand watts, so we'll skip to the sprints for the other ones. So jumping to the over and unders, which is the uh, 150, 350, 150, and 450 intervals, you can see here and a few of those back to back and similar, but not the same. Um, a lot of my videos do turn into advertisements for the Vivero pedals because they seem to match everything just nicely or known trusted sources. So you can see here the uh, Kicker 18 and the Favero Asiomas, all happy days along the top, but the stage is, is just a little bit lower for there, there, and over here. Diving into the left, right of those over and unders, if I select that correctly, it's a little bit messy, but we can tell from here that the right side stages reads the lowest of all of those. So let's compare the right side of the Asioma because I, again, I'm not proper left, right. There's gonna be wonkiness, but I do have two power meters each side to keep each other in check. So 216 on the right side, 28, 208 on the right side of the stages. So there's a discrepancy there that I can't explain. So that was the Kicker 18 a few months back. Now over to the Neo 2 with the new firmware 1.5.0. Uh, there is a drop out there, ignore that for now. But diving into the data a little closer, it's closer, but we still see the stages dropping down a little bit. So stages left, right, Asioma Duos, Neo 2, and there's that blue line there, which is the stages, which is just a little bit lower in steady state. In the sprints, there were two there, because I spun out a little bit. This was live streamed, so ignore the first one. If you saw that on a live stream, I didn't grab the right gears on the Neo 2. Second one, sprints, no problems at all. This is smooth data by five seconds, so no problems at all with the peaks. Into the overs and unders. That's the data. I won't give you my opinion on it, but you can see it right there. The Asiomas, the Neo 2 is matching pretty well, and the stage is still reading below that. Is what it is. Uh, and then up the um, Watopia wall, I did this one on live stream, and you can see there that up the Watopia wall, the Neo 2 and the Asiomas, as I'm out of the saddle, really reefing along uh, above 500 watts there. They're fine, those two power meters, but the stage is again reading low. Up to, uh, what have we got, 500 watts. So we're nearly on 25 watts low at the 500 watt mark. Um, hmm. Is what it is, hey. Just riding along, just riding along though, not too bad. 137, 137, 130 on the Tax Neo. A few stop starts and a few accelerations and decelerations that mightn't be picked up down the drivetrain, but um, that's all looking pretty good riding along. So steady state stuff just isn't the key. And again, today, I thought, look, let's pull out the Neo 1 and go back in time a little bit. The Neo 1's always been pretty good. And again, it, the same kind of thing as what we're seeing with the steady state stuff. So just riding along, just riding along, stages left, right, Tax Neo, Asioma Duos, and the, uh, the stage is probably around 10 to 15 watts lower in steady state. Sprints, fine. No problems in the sprints. And in the overs and unders, very consistent is what we're seeing with the Neo 2. So, so in conclusion there, that was three Llama lab tests, Kicker 18, Neo 1, Neo 2, and the Asiomas, all disagreeing in steady state with the stage's left-right power meter that I had. Hmm. Now, my thoughts today were, let's just say, whenever I did a zero offset after 10 minutes for the Llama lab test, that the zero offset was only sending one offset to one side of the power meter. So there are two independent power meters, obviously the offset when you do an offset or calibration on the head units, it has to go to both. I was just thinking, what happens if it only went to one? Might have been a bug in the firmware or an issue, and that could have been the reason why we were seeing the right read low, if it just wasn't being zeroed correctly. So today, before I finished up my session, I stopped, Connected via the phone, the phone, via the Bluetooth app and their utility, I did the zero offset to both sides of the stage's left, right power meter. And I performed the Llama lab test steady state stuff again, just quickly. So that's where we're at. It's still no good. So if the right side's being troublesome, and we do have the option to split left and right down the rabbit hole, we continue. Okay, now onto the final Llama lab test, just quickly to Llama lab test number four. I did do more than this, but this is all I'll talk about because it does give us a good conclusion of where the data is at. Uh, yeah, I split the left and the right as independent power meters. I use the Asiomas and the Neo. So technically I have the same amount of power meters, but I'm reading uh, the left and right independently and then they're doubling that because that's what happens with stages when you unlink them. So unlinked power meters. And what we're seeing is what we expect there. The right hand side dropping down um, and the left reading more correct or giving me a better representation of the power that I'm doing now. Let's have a think about that. That's a left, right expensive power meter together being worse than just the left because the right appears to be wonky in my testing with the Kicker 18, the Neo and the Neo 2 and up against the, you know the story. But um, yeah, pretty disappointing to see that. So the just 
using the left hand side for me is more representative of the actual power that I'm putting out. The right, it's going wonky to wonky town. Uh, overs and unders, I won't dig in too hard because the data is a bit uh, a bit skewed there. But um, what we can see there is the pedals and the neo quite happy. Stages is quite unhappy. Hmm. However, just riding along in sim mode, the stages left right is okay. So it just appears to be this steady state or really hard effort when you're putting a lot of force through the pedals. Things get a bit skewy on the right hand side. Okay, so there's my conclusion indoors. Right side wonky, left side good. Double the left is more representative than left right combined. Hmm, don't know what's going on there. Okay, on to a more happy topic. Outside and riding outside where the wind is in our hair, except when it comes to me. Um, White Swan loop out via Creswick here. Beautiful loop, 90 minutes. And uh, comparing against the Asioma Duos, let's just select the climb here, the lead up to White Swan and the climb. 256 versus 253. Asiomas, stages left, right. Looking pretty good. Um, further down the road, with a lot of stop starts there. It's very jagged because this data is unsmoothed. 192, 188, um, all looking pretty good, except now, if you wind back to, if you've followed all my other power meter reviews or user experience discussions, probably more accurately called, um, I did have some issues out of the saddle with the Z watt power meter when you're reefing on the bars, really putting some power down about 500 watts. Wasn't there with the four eyes, that was fine. But um, hmm, there's a problem right there. Now, let me show you how this happens out on the road. This is rolling into Creswick here. We have the stages on the left, we have the Asio Maduros on the right. And here we start ramping up above 500 watts. And the numbers you're seeing there are three seconds smoothed. So you will be looking at that on your head units. And yeah, you, you can tell those numbers there are different. As I'm really reefing on the bars, putting the power down, not just straight up and down, it's pushing the bike side to side. And uh, yeah, there is a power discrepancy there. A few kilometers later, just out of town, I thought I'd perform the same test, but this time in the saddle. Same power, over 500 watts, in the saddle with the bike up and down, not moving side to side as I'm ripping on the bars. Here's that data now. That's looking pretty good. Here's that data out on the road. So although just riding along, the numbers are pretty good, as soon as you're out of the saddle and are throwing that bike side to side, those numbers start to separate between those two power meters. Now that isn't something that I saw with the 4i, it's not something that I see with a spider-based power meter such as the Quark S-Works uh, spider that we have, but it's something that I can make happen with the stages left, right. So look, let's just dive into some more just riding along, just riding along to show you that it is okay under normal circumstance, 215, 209, a few stop starts there, so you'll get a bit of stop start depending on where it's recording. That's all looking pretty good. Again, coming into town, this is an acceleration. Uh, jumps a little bit high there on the stages. But that's in the saddle, in the saddle there. Let me jump in. And then out of the saddle there, it starts to separate. So, hmm. Jumping into why it separates in that instance, looking at the left-right power meter, it doesn't appear to be either left or right out of the saddle. It just appears to be both. They're both a little lower compared to the pedals, as you can see here. To show you that the numbers overall are still pretty good outside with this unit, the mean max power graph here, so five minutes, it's within a few watts, 10 minutes the same, 20 minutes pretty close, within three watts of the two power meters in 30 minutes. So again, just riding along is fine outdoors, steady state stuff, normal riding, but as soon as you get the full mongrel, start reefing on the bars like that, trying to get massive power out on different angles, things go a little bit different. Okay, so my take on this particular stage's left-right crank, and this is only this crank that I'm referring to because this may not be representative of every crank set produced by stages for left-right power meter measurement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Lawyers don't just, it's just my experience that I'm talking about here. Firstly, it's a magnificent looking crank. You cannot deny that. It is super pretty, very attractive, 
but it's not just a pretty face. It has to have a good personality. And here's where things broke down with my relationship between me and this crank set. We couldn't agree with the Neo, the Neo 2, the Kicker 18, or the Favero Asiomas in steady state indoors. That was a bit of a problem for me. Outdoors, when things got a bit rough and we started throwing each other around, we also disagreed on the power numbers and what they should be. So it wasn't happy days there. Look, just riding along, the numbers were okay indoors in sim mode. Just riding along outdoors were okay. But in those eight edge cases, well, I guess um, erg mode really isn't an edge case. It was just unhappy days. The data was different. However, the dilemma that I have is that this unit here is a multi Tour de France winning power meter. Where have I gone wrong? It can't be it. It has to be me. So my soul searching for the last few months, was it my pedal stroke? What was I doing wrong with the way I was collecting data and my pedal stroke? Was it my testing protocol? What was I doing wrong there? Was it the things I was comparing the other power meters to? Is it right to compare the Neo, the Neo 2, the Kicker 18, the Asiomas, the P1s, the everything else that I've done behind the scenes? I'm drawing blanks though. I'm really not coming to any conclusion. I'd be more than happy if the issues I was encountering were me and we could define what those issues were and then carry on. But that doesn't explain why the 4i was so good, why the P1s, P2s, Asiomas, uh, what else have I got on the list here? The replace vector 3s were okay. The S-Works Quark Spider, they all seem trustworthy sources. So I, I don't have any answers on this. Without any hard evidence of what's going on and what I'm seeing on the right-hand side, I'm drawing parallels with the Watt Team G3 power meter, which I had similar right-hand side reading low issues, which was confirmed with the engineers. They pretty much confirmed that what I was seeing was correct. It wasn't reading the correct torque on the cranks it the whole way around. It was only really during the downstroke, not during the cross. Anyhow, rabbit hole in the other video that I have on that. However, what I'm seeing here is the right-hand side not reading correctly on a Shimano crank set. This is not the first time I've seen this, so I guess the challenge is gonna to be to throw down to 4i. Have you guys, with your three triaxial power meter, solved this problem that I'm seeing here with not just this power meter, but with other Shimano crank sets retrofitted with strain gauges? Hmm. Whilst scratching my head and not having answers to this data set that I'm getting with the right side reading low in erg mode, I was trawling the internet and came across somebody with a very, very similar issue. KK over on DC and Remica's comment section on Ray's left right review appears to be seeing the same thing. With two crank sets, one has been replaced with stages, and he's seeing the same thing. The right was reading low between 10 to 15 watts. Hmm. Okay, wrapping this one up for today, the question I always ask myself at the end of all of this is, is this a power meter that I can use to test other power meters against? Is it a good enough baseline to know if the other power meter is good or not? At this point in time, that's a no from the stages. The left hand side only was more accurate for me than the left and right combined, so something is wrong there. My dialogue with stages was opened about six months ago. It's gone a little quiet. I've pinged them more recently, so this one's going to be a stay tuned. Hmm.